God don't know this difficulty. I'm telling you about every text here. And you don't know them. What is going to be your reaction if you tell them about every text? And the man was still looking at it. That was the text. Like, give me a sample. Give them, give me a sample. But by the condemn himself, it's not the case. And yeah, so nobody has gone to heaven before. Is the condemn saying yes? Except he that came down from heaven, the Father, the Son of Man. Actually, this boy is talking about himself. Who right now is in heaven? But stop there. You are in front of me. And I'm seeing you, and you are telling them right now that you are here, that you are also in them. Hey, young man, let me try to cool down. They could not understand this. This is what is not referred to when we are talking about heavenly blessings. Our blessings in heavenly blessings. In both places, in Ephesians, as in John, what you see is to show us what is heavenly in contradiction to what is earthly. It's important that at all times in our life, we should be seeing this play out in our lives every moment. That is what is going to get me and you to always be focused on God and on His Word. Before you know it, your thought process begins to be activated in such a manner that when you are thinking, you are just thinking of yourself out there in the heavenly. Whereas actually, you are still here on earth. But I ask you, brother, ask you, sister, when you and I sit down today and we are thinking, how many times have you seen yourself in heaven? <laughs> Is it not about money? Is it not about position? Is it not about marriage? It's not about child, husband, wife, siblings, parents, the difficulties that worry has inflicted on us, the election, same faith uh, tickets. How many times have you sat down? And you see yourself as if you are out there. You are just feeling that rarefied atmosphere there of the heaven. How many times? Today is the beginning of another week, as man comes time. From that Sunday, to just midnight yesterday, how many times did you see us feel, feel yourself as if you are operating in the heaven? How many times? And when we say rapture, say amen. Rapture, amen. And you don't think about rapture for one week. You never saw yourself going in rapture. But you saw yourself going to Dubai. <laughs> Go to America. No, you may not, you don't need to leave the earthly realm. You know you are here. But you can't, what you are just thinking, my goodness. Oh, all of a sudden. Oh, that trumpet sound. I must myself now. I'm 
of things. <sighs> I'm meeting with Christ in the air. Oh my goodness. What a joy. How many times have you talked like that, brother and sister? Eh? How many times? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, you see? How many times? And we want to go to this rapture. But we are not thinking about this rapture. But I want to go to Dubai. I'm thinking I'm going to get the form and feel the visa. Who are going to see? Who will help you to get the visa? Are we not doing this, George? Get the visa to go to London to go to uh, uh, help you. And the visa is the word of God. Dwell in it. And if you are amazed while you are dwelling in it, they give you the visa to Dubai and to London. Truth, judge. With its house of God. That we must tell the truth. Don't be so Peter talk. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so come to the judgment must be given in the yes. house of God. We must not turn it in the house of God to when we talk about fufu or fried rice. No, there's no such thing. Heavenly places. So this is what I, I said about such things. The heavenlies, my definition of them is where the believer's spiritual experience and I define the heavens as the sphere, the sphere of the believer's spiritual experience as identified with Christ. You want me to say that again? Yes, sir. The heavens are defined as the sphere of the believer's spiritual experience as defined with Christ. You look at that, but well, remember, defined with Christ, how? Now, I want to tell you, in a number of places. One, nature. You want some, you want some scripture to go with that? Nature? Yes, sir. I should give some scripture to go with that. Yes, sir. Okay. Second Peter, one, four. Second Peter, chapter one, verse four. That believers spiritual experience and identified with Christ in Nature, second Peter one four. Two in life, Colossians three four. <coughs> Excuse me, Colossians chapter three verse four. First John five twelve. First John. Chapter 5, verse 12. Colossians 3, 4. And 1 John 5, 12. In relationship, the third point. In relationships. In relationships. Huh? Okay. In relationships. John 20, verse 17. John 20, verse 17. Hebrews 2, 11. That is with regard to relationship, right? Is that the tell of? Yes, sir. Huh? Okay. That is there. Yes. Okay, I'll give you some more. Service, fourth one, service. Service, the fourth word, service. Service, the 
Shall I go? Yes, sir. Fort Worth service? Yes, sir. John 17, 18. John chapter 17, verse 18. And Matthew 28, 20. Chapter 28, verse 20. That's one number. What's the first number? And to give forth one. Okay, fifth. Suffering. In suffering, too. Suffering. Suffering, yes. Philippians 1 29. Philippians 1 29. And 3 verse 10. Philippians 1 29, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 as well. And Colossians 1 24. Colossians 1 24. That's five. Six. Inheritance. In inheritance. Romans 8, 16 to 17. Romans 8, 16 to 17. What number? Okay, seven. And lastly, seven. Future glory in the kingdom. Future glory in the kingdom. Future glory in the kingdom. That's Romans 8, 18 to 21. Romans 8, 18 to 21. First Peter 2, verse 9. First Peter 2. Verse 9. Revelations 1, verse 6. And Revelations 5, verse 10. I hesitated to give you all this, but for those of you who will undertake to study it, you will understand the issue of the emphasis more. Those scriptures will actually show you what I'm trying to say. That the heavens, you cannot see them as the sphere of the universe spiritual experience as, a, as identified with Christ in nature, in life, in relationships, in service, in suffering, in inheritance, and future glory. Kingdom. Therefore, you can conclude. You can conclude straight away that the believer who's all inside of him or her is about the heavenlies. The, the, the believers, the believer is a heavenly man. You can see it in what we are saying now. You can see that the believer is a heavenly man. And that makes him what on earth? It makes him a stranger and a pilgrim on the earth. Have you remember someone who said that before? You remember the scripture of Abraham? And he was looking for a city who's been that man is here. God. So that's who the believer is. He's a heavenly man and a stranger of children, children on the earth. Okay, so you can get that in Hebrews. He said, Hebrews 3 1, what I was trying to tell you. Hebrews 3 1 and 1 Peter 2 and 11. Look at that, George. Huh? 
Just look at 2 11, chapter 2, verse 11, and also Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. We have to be at all times in our, in our hearts in that heavenly place. The heavenly, yes, sorry. Yes, but when the Corruption came in and uh, Hebrew. Sin came. The earth and changed. Therefore, we go back to the attributes of Elohim. Then you have to be the redeemer and the savior. If they say, are you to know that we do get flooded the earth so from time to time? And then there are maybe some good stuff we have in the place. And that have the confusion of flood. And now we need to take care of all that. What are we going to do first? We want to remove the things that are good out of the way. Is that not so? Yes, sir. And then we need to clear up the flow and the ravages of the flow. Is that not so? Yes, sir. When we are finished clearing them, what happens? Huh? We will return all those things that we have put out back there. Is that not so? Yes, Why are we returning them there? Because that is where they belong. You catch it now. So that this several things to do to us because of the works that are taken over as a result of the fall in the garden of Eden. Yes. Um, everyone loves things that No. That wasn't. In the simple truth. I'm not unaware of that song. Uh, I'm sorry, see that. The earth is not mine. I know, I know, I know, I know I can't see, eh? but something like that. The earth is not. Uh, something like, uh, the world is not mine, but the earth. I'm just passing through. Heaven is my own, something. Lord, what's the Lord? Lord, what can I? Uh, uh, so, uh, it's not correct to, it's not correct, church. It's not what? Uh, you know, so he doesn't, he wants you to understand what you have here. God does not make mistakes. He created heaven to be his own kingdom. Who is the king of heaven? Do you notice his king of kings? Two or four. That means he already has recognized from the beginning that he is king, but there will be other kings as well. Just that he will be the king of all those kings. Is that correct or not? So if he's going to be the king of all those kings, are those kings going to be helping the king there? Or they have to be somewhere else? They have to be somewhere else. And that somewhere else is the earth. God created him. He also created the earth. He and his angelic family will be in Heaven. Man will set up his own place here on earth under the jurisdiction of the kingdom of heaven where God is the king. And so, 
teach us how to pray. And he now taught you how to pray. Taught you how to pray. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. That will tell you that God is king there. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the high of here on earth, if his will is going to be done on earth, there will have to be people on this earth for God's will to be done on this earth. Here. But because something had gone wrong, look, when you go and read uh, First Thessalonians 5, you will see that one of the main reasons for the rapture is that God wants to take us out of this place so that when He will be visiting the earth with His wrath, we will not be there. You can't that, church. That is what is going to happen. And what God is going to do for us in rapture, he's going to repeat it again. Can anybody think about when he's going to repeat it? Yes, sir. I'm not going to eat. But not to accept. Ephesians, first uh, uh, Thessalonians chapter 5 says, God is removing us from here for the rapture so that when his wrath is falling on the earth, we will not be there. The world has stayed in heaven and he has dealt with this earth during the tribulation. Then in Christ Jesus, he comes back to this earth along with us to finish off the wicked antichrist satanic forces on the earth. And when he has finished doing that, he will set up the kingdom of heaven on the earth. It will last. 1,000 years. Are you following me, George? Yes, sir. At the end of 1,000 years, the curse of man in the Garden of Eden, when God said, in the day that you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. In the day, that means you will die within 1,000 years. A day to the Lord is like 1,000 years to you and to me on this earth. Do you understand? And God said, in the day that you eat this thing, you shall surely die. That is why no human being has ever lived up to 1,000 years. In the day, meaning within the day, within 1,000 years. It is God that placed the curse, and it's only God that can remove the curse. So it moves his bride away, allows the earth to go through great tribulation, great suffering. Church, I want to understand one thing. In that period called the tribulation, mm -hmm. There will be of the miserable devastation, destruction, suffering, whatever name you have for it, give it. God spoke to Isaiah that by the time this earth comes out of the great tribulation, he said only few men will be left. And he says so. I can show it in the Bible. In Isaiah. The all, he says, only few men will be left. When are they going to die? 
During that period that you and I are in heaven as a result of the rapture. Do you see why you and I have to get out of here and be the rapture? And this is therefore why, while we are still here, we should be still trying to put ourselves in that situation, in that realm of being in the heavenly places while still here. Do you understand that now? Yes, yes it's going to take some effort. Yes, it's going to take some pain. Yes, it's going to take some uh, uh, problems so that we separate ourselves from that which is going on in this world. The matter is not by your power. It's not by my power. What God is looking for in me, what God is looking for in you, is to say, Lord, I understand this word that you are giving me. I believe it totally. What I'm saying is, I want to practice it. I want to do it. And I'm asking you, come and do it in me, in Jesus' name. Amen. That's all God is asking for. But remember, you cannot deceive him. Oh, that is how, is that it? Oh, no problem. Even right now, I'm going to tell God to so come and deal with me. Yeah. Do it this way to talk to God. You can't deceive God. It must come from within your heart. The innermost resources of your heart. God will see that conviction there. He will see that resolution inside of you there. And we see the resoluteness in the way you live your life there. And then He will come out, come down, and And then he takes you and me out of here. And we stay up there. Church, we will be seeing this devastation going on in the earth when we see it. Right from heaven. How would you feel? Seeing members of your family passing through this devastation. See all those mighty mansions that your father, your mother, your uncle, your brother, your sister, they have defrauded the nation. They have killed. They have gone through uh, uh, Africa magic. What is that? That's the best way to go to. Uh, oh, what are you doing now? Strikes. All of them, they go to the world make money. You stay in heaven there and you see all the information being destroyed. Some of them destroyed right inside of those places. They are traders of money, cash. Money. And by the time we come out with Christ, only few men will be left. As I said, man will be like. Gold. Church is gold in light supply. Never. Remember, I tried to tell you about we escaped the rapture. I told you there's another escape, right? That's why I'm waiting to tell you now. Then we stay here for 1,000 years for God to remove the curse of the Garden of Eden. So finally, man stays here and for a 1,000 year period, and man does not die. So that curse is broken. With that curse broken, we we'll now have the second resurrection. Remember, rapture is a resurrection. I hope you always remember that. Yeah? You commit us, all we think about them is like a week. But remember, God is a resurrection. It's the first resurrection. And that first resurrection started with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And to be completed in the time of the ministry of the two prophets of Revelation 11. That is after our. So those two prophets of the devil, they also will be raptured, and that will be the end of it. I was listening to a preacher this morning, one of these uh, 39 days from our God, 
I was talking about how the one for the four thousand of Revolution 7, those Jews, 12 from each tribe, and they also will be translated. It's not correct. They will not be translated. As they said, they were translated, they now went to Revolution 14, and said, you can now see them, they are now with Jesus Christ in Mount Zion in heaven. Yes, there's a Mount Zion in heaven, but that is not correct. The Mount Zion, what do we Jesus Christ is the one here on earth in the Middle East, in Jerusalem. So after the 1,000 years, the second resurrection takes place. That everything that breathes you come up to that resurrection. Who are not already with Christ after that two? They will all rise. Satan, the demons, all the bad men from him. They will now appear at the white through judgment. Then they are sentenced the huge. Part of them are sentenced to damnation and destruction in the lake of fire. Then something will happen after that. The earth will not be burnt up. Glory to Glory to Peter as well. The earth will not be burnt up. Now, does it mean burning like you burn paper now to become ashes? No. It means cleansing by fire. Therefore, you have to ask yourself well, we're already on this earth at that time, so what will happen to us? That is the time God will give us out again. We shall be on the breath of the earth while God cleanses this earth with fire. And when that has been done, we will return back into the earth and eternity will begin. God has to cleanse the earth with fire. Because of all that has happened on this end, right from the time of the Luciferian rebellion, when Lucifer rebelled, you know it affected the earth. That's what put the earth in the situation in which we find it in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, where the Bible says, An earth was without form and void, and darkness upon the face of the earth. Something happened. The rock that happened at that time is still with us today. So when this time comes up again, then the fall of Adam, all the sin that man has committed, all the terrible things man has put on this earth. So we you and I are in this place now. What we have here now, it did not come about through uh, knowledge of uh, how the Bible put it. Knowledge of the tree of knowledge of good and bad. It is from that knowledge that we have built house. This chair where you are sitting upon. This book is not signed behind it. The computer in front of me, all of it is coming from here. That tree of the light of good and bad. Were they part of what God created for the earth in the kind of Eden? The answer is what? No. Therefore, God must return this earth. Before we go into eternity, God will first of all return this earth 
to its pre to its atomic state. And then we can go to eternity. So if you are, you don't know what it is going to look like. But remember, that cleansing by fire must come. Go and be first Peter. And go and be the foundation. You will see it there. It's very, very clear. Okay? Don't be back in the time. Huh? Did somebody say something? Yeah. We have another time. Are you crazy now? Okay. Please give another 15 minutes and we close. Not let me make sure we, we achieve something here today. So you see, what are these blessings? What are these blessings we are looking at? With what are we going to be blessed? Some of them we know too well. Now, divine healing, there are some of the blessings. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. What are these blessings? Some of them we are unfamiliar with. Divine healing, for knowledge, revelation, vision, powers, tongues, interpretation, wisdom, knowledge, All of these things we have and give us joy of speaking to be full of glory and how to be filled with the Spirit. And we'll be walking together. Why? Because we are all sitting in heavenly places in that realm. There will not be one evil thought among us. No. It cannot be. No cigarettes, not one stick of cigarettes will ever be smoked. No one short dress will be worn among us. Or we are dressing in trousers, or showing off a quarter or half of their breasts. Not one of these. We're dead. Nobody will have anything against the other. All of us will all really speak in love and harmony. No backbiting, no gossip, no hatred, no displeasure. No arrogance or pride exhibited by any of us. And when all this is there, what do we get? That promise of the Father. That rushing of the mighty wind. Then you say, I know I'm blessed with spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Oh, Daddy, can that really happen? Yes, sir. Not only can it happen, it is happening now. And so next week, the long time and keep us. We shall go into the next verse according as he has chosen us. We want to find out when, how. This is what we are going to do with it. 
God will carry and keep us, and laughter does not strike to against you. That's how it should be. May God keep us in that hands in Jesus' name. For see some of the things that are going on yesterday, and I'm sure some of you were yesterday or two days ago, I'm not quite sure now. I'm sure some of you watching news will have seen that they were praying in the church. Animal Thanksgiving. And I'm sure when you have animal thanksgiving, you begin to think that the place you bring animal to church to come and use it as a thanksgiving. Is that what you think? But that's not what it was. And I'm not talking about the ceremony, I'm talking inside of church. They brought them. Principally, dogs. They carried them to the church. And the minister came out and started spraying holy water on the altar to these animals and praying. Church, maybe 1,000 years ago, this week that just ended yesterday, just tell me where that church saw this in the Bible. Which Bible? Not even the Old Testament did that. Where are these theologians getting their interpretation of the word of God? Can animal inside church and then the pastor, preacher, whatever I want to call him, then comes down and begins to holy water, holy water. What is holy water for the start? Our people go to church today, even when they are going to give offering, they are all dancing to the altar to give an uh, offering. And you see the Lord Father standing there in the mass, mass water, uh, holding the thing, and man is pouring water on people. So, what is that water? Do? Is it cleansing your sin? And somebody said, I must go because I want to receive the holy water. The man who's praying doesn't even know that he's alive. Doesn't even know that he does nothing to you. Does not get you anywhere closer to God. But it will attract you. Because once you do something strange in the job, then that means uh, you have done. This is, this, this is all the sins inside of the church. But man likes it. So it is given to man. Cool. And they pray for it. God will not allow to receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So may God bring us together again next Sunday. And if you want, come to us again next Sunday in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. And so, Father God, we thank you for what you have done for us today. Teaching us your word that we be not deceived by the cacophony of sound that is going out from two places today in the day of sounds, many of which have no truth in accordance with your word. But man gathers around these lies, these deceits, because it sounds okay in their ears. And at the end, they depart. They make that they have heard from you. Do not allow us to be deceived, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We are truly 
in the end times, the end is very close. Only those who are blind spiritually do not see that we are almost at the end. Father God, save us from being deceived in the mighty name of Jesus. Every move of the enemy could deceive us so. Father, may your spirit fight back for us and deliver us from all of these errors, all of these heresies that have been preached in churches today in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us, O oh God Almighty, to stand firmly for your word, for man the family by bread alone, but by every word. Help us to understand what every means and to know that we have to believe it even as you are giving to us. Every, no exception, you must pick it up in the mighty name of Jesus. Even where we do not promptly understand, oh God, give us the spirit to believe. Believe, knowing that later we shall also have understanding as well. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, watch over us. As well comes time of the new week today, be with us. Amen. Even as we have brought us to see this day. In every department of life, Father, lead us to Do not allow us to rely on our own thoughts. Do not allow us to believe that we can do anything on our own. It's a lie when they say heaven help those who help themselves. And they tell us this is the Bible. There is no such thing in the Bible. We have told that over and over and over. Heaven wants to help us. Help us to release us to surrender. Help us to surrender, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Help us to surrender in our thoughts, in our hearts, and in our actions. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We need your deliverance in every way that Satan has captured us. And we have become possessed one way or another. Deliver us from some possessions in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Every property of the devil still in our possession. Father God, help us to return them to the dead to the enemy. To surrender them to Satan so that we are no longer lacking in our records with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, we are here and there are needs, and you are the only one who supplies all our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You are so supply God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Therefore, bless the work of our hands in accordance with your promise to bless the work of our hands. So that we will prosper and be in hell, even as our souls prosper. Father, bring it to pass. You are promised to return to the devourer. We thank you, your God. And while you are returning to the devourer, Father, give us grace never to cheat you again in our tithes and our offerings. All those who are beginning to find that tithe is not a scriptural matter, we will still teach them. And that is that because it's absolutely scriptural, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. These things are clearly stated, and the devil is deceiving people not to believe. Do not allow such sort of condemnation in God in the mighty name of Jesus. There will never be those who steal our own in the mighty name of Jesus. Now we find all our devils, in all our activities, in all our enterprises. In all our struggles, all our payments and finances, Father God, may we never experience failure or disappointment or nearness or failure and ever success. Do not to, to, to experience frustration in any shape or form. In all your dreams, may we not encounter stagnation, darkness of retardation, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, that in all these things, we shall go forward, move forward. Success upon success, all of it miraculously in Jesus' name we pray. And none will bless us with our homes, our place of work, worship, Father God. 
As you are over as a guy, you can for great provider to write your own one. You are the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth, the great dispenser of your things of the earth to us, your people. You are also, Father, Jehovah and Alpha, who gave us your God says 2,000 years ago, we were healed by your stripes of the flesh. Father, we have played this. Let it be to pass now. Let the mighty Lord and Jesus. Take over all the hands of our bodies. From the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. All the matters of terror and standard. Every plantation of Satan into the hands of our bodies. Father, come against them. Or pull them. Or smash them. Not allow them to do what they can ask them. Amen. The mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, because when you are answering our prayer, above all, you God, let sin not appear and operate in our life in this new day and in this new way and in this new world. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let us with holiness, with righteousness, with purity, with chastity, with humility, with meekness, with temperance. Let all this be our portion in this new day, in this new week, in this new month, in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I bless God to the God's fellowship? We are physically on the Zoom platform. All your children who have always devoted time to be on the platform and to come out physically, remember them, oh God, in all your prayers want to do. In all the supplications, in all the applications, Father, do you hear them? Father, grant them all of this, both on the spiritual and temporal needs, in the mighty name of Jesus. Give all God's to deliver fellowship. Every plantation of Satan and forces of God to deliver fellowship. Land, coldness, no oneness, wantonness, worldliness, sinfulness, backslide. All that is not of you, but the enemy has brought in there. Father, oppose and destroy. And bless us with all the prayers and prayers and prayers to buy God to deliver us from the That will destroy every sin, every sin, every sin that is still destroyed. We thank you for the name of Answer. You are your work brings out without any attention, without any embellishment, without any compromise of whatever description, without any fear of faith. That is an assembly that is continually washed by the washing of the waters by your work. An assembly where the presence and power of your spirit are in evidence. The fruit and gifts of your spirit of your spirit manifesting. And may all of this form an attraction that will bring more and more of your children to come to this, this truth. As we are the course of God to deliver us from this. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. We thank you, God, because we know you have answered this prayer. Bless the people that we live in God. Amen. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Arise, O Lord God, come down and show us thy mercy. For a time to favor Zion, your children will cry to your God. Let this be the time to favor us in all we have committed to your hands. 
for here the set time is come. You set the time, Lord. You created time, you control time. Your time changes not, you set it not. Grant, O oh Lord, that this be the time, O oh God, when all we are committed to your hand, you will favor us with all of them to favor time. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Receive the priestly blessing. The Lord bless and keep you. Amen. Let his face shine upon you and the precious of you. Amen. Let his countenance upon you. Amen. Let bless his children and bless the Amen. Before we say the praise, let me just remind you about something, something that is going on today. Remember, Jesus is God's clock. Everything God is doing on this earth. He is doing it through the prison of Israel. Always bear that in mind. I know that many of us don't even remember to pray for Israel. But God demands it of us who say we are the bride of Christ that we must pray for Israel. Why? Because we are spiritual Israel. I didn't say so. It's there in the book. In Romans and other places, you see. Things are happening quietly there. A new group has arisen among the Palestinians now. And they have vowed that Israel will disappear. And they are equipping themselves with weapons. The clash is going on right now. What I also would like to bear in mind is that Arabs, Arab nations are discussing now how to build a temple by which I mean another Islamic site on the temple mount. I'm not talking about the Jewish temple. Islamic Arab they are planning to build another structure. Why? They know that Israel wants to build its third temple. And so they want to build so that that space will be denied Israel. And this is happening at a time when Israel has got everything that is going to lose for the temple in place. What do you think will happen? There has to be one. Let us remember this. And let us pray for the peace of Israel. May God help us to remember this service in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty living master Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. God bless you with good. May we bless you with Jesus. Amen. Amen. And thank you all of you joining us on the internet. Our sister Maker, our brother Kobe, our sister Priscilla, our sister Favor Kadri, our brother Kuma, our sister Fatima, our brother Isaac. Our, our sister, our sister Popsy. Our uh, sister Fatima, and others that cannot read out your name right here. God bless you all for joining us. And those who have left already, the Lord will thank you for joining us today in Jesus. Praise the Lord. You are the Lord that is your name. You will never share. Good with
In Jesus, no powerful name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Christus, I need thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm only part of King of Glory. We thank you. We bless and we worship you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your word, Jesus. But we have received your word, Jesus. But we receive the word of your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Lord, 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 we commend the offering into the heaven and the earth. Let us satisfy the offering in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Every hand that has given and all those that desire to give, that they should not be able to give it today, O oh Lord. But I pray that you bless each and every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We satisfy the offering in the blood of Jesus Christ. Blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus, for powerful name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am thankful every time I have to remind the church of our country. It is not proper. 